G'day everyone, today I'm going to show you how to tie off an electric fence using one of these insulators and a bit of wire. Many thanks to Nigel McHugh. This is a, uh, a reshoot of a video that I did previously and he's made some really, really helpful comments and improvements that I'm hoping will help everyone today. This is a sharing and learning community, this video channel, so if you like what you see today, please remember, hit the little red button down there and subscribe. I do my best to bring out one new video every week. All right, let's get started. You'll notice that the insulators have a hole that goes right through at this end, and if you spin them around 90 degrees, they have a hole that goes right through that end. What we're going to do is we're going to actually put this meter of wire through the far end of the insulator. So you'll notice that most of the insulator is now covered by that wire there and we're going to the far end hole. What we then do is we wrap the wire around the insulator completely and make a horseshoe at this point around the wire. Now that we've made that horseshoe we're actually going to go back through the same hole again pulling the wire nice and tight. Now I find if you pull wire rapidly you don't get those awkward knots and those awkward bends in the wire. So we'll pull the wire through rapidly there, pull it down and you'll see that we've covered three quarters of the distance of the insulator. Now we can make our usual crank handle and spin the wire off with our pigtail, keeping it securely fastened to the post. Now we're going to add our electric fence wire which is insulated from our post. You'll notice that I went to the end hole coming from the post. This time I'm going to spin the insulator 90 degrees and you'll see there's a new channel opening up for me with a hole the furthest away from the electric fence. I'm going to put my electric fence wire through that. I'm going to give myself a generous portion because I'm going to be using a fair bit of it. Pull that around rapidly and then make our little horseshoe here again around the end of the wire. I don't have a post to work against this time so it's a little bit more tricky but we've made our little horseshoe there. Now once again I want to put my wire back through the same hole. I'm going to pull on this wire very quickly to try and make the knot as tight as possible. I'm then going to pull the wire back down and making the same crank handle as last time I'm going to spin the wire off. Now because this is high tensile wire, once I've twisted it in that direction, if I bring it back a bit, spin my crank handle 90 degrees and spin it in this direction, the wire will snap straight off, leaving me with a nice clean break and I don't even have to use my pliers. So there you have, when you tie off your insulator correctly you should have the wire overlapping at both ends and then you've got a secure electric fence where the insulator is actually squeezed when it's put under tension rather than pulled apart. Alright, so we've got our strainers now. We're going to start setting this up to strain up our fence. So I always start near one end. I like to not put my strainers in the middle of a fence because um, that can lead, if there's a problem with the knot, that can lead to you losing fencing wire. So we'll just put our chain on. So we'll run our chain out, pull the wire up hand tight, attach the other end of our strainers and now we're right to start walking the feet up the chain. Now that's about as much tension as I would ever want to put into an electric fence. So you want to be able, if you've got your tensioning right, to push your fence down to the ground even up near the end. You want it to be quite flexible because the animal's got to be able to push against it and get away from it quick. Also, if a tree branch falls on your fence, bang! Guess what? Your fence lives to survive another day. Electric fences can actually be cheaper than normal fences too, because even though I'm putting this on a standard fence spacing, ideally I'd only be running one in every three of those posts. You tend to stagger your posts a lot more with an electric fence, so you can save a lot of money on materials. I've just set this fence up with a normal spacing because the plan is eventually to run some sheep mesh on the other side. So now all we have to do is return our wire into our little insulators 
put the clips back in. So there you go guys, an easy way to tie off your fence using one of these insulators, whether it be a black plastic job or whether it be a porcelain jobby. If you like this video, please do hit the little red button down there, it doesn't cost you anything. I make a new video every week or so and I love having you guys in our learning community. Until I see you next time, take care.